This video shows a dying fly at a speed up of 64 times. I found this fly on the floor of my attic on 19 November 2016 at my house which is near Albany, New York, USA. This is one of many flies that slowly die in my attic around this time of year. As you'll see, the fly struggles for the entire duration of this video. I think this is pretty typical, and in my informal experience looking at these flies in the attic, it seems to take many hours to several days for them to die. I'm unsure if it's better to squish the flies rather than let them die slowly. This is a question about trade-offs between long durations of moderate suffering versus brief durations of possibly very intense suffering if the smushing doesn't destroy the fly's entire nervous system instantaneously. If you do squish flies, I recommend doing so by hitting them with a flat, hard surface, like a piece of wood, against a rough piece of paper underneath, so that you can completely squish their innards flat, with the aim of destroying nervous connectivity across the whole body. I'll illustrate this procedure at the end of the video. In any case, this video is a sad reminder that death for wild animals is often filled with suffering. In order to prevent future animals from enduring experiences like these, I support policies that reduce plant growth in order to diminish the number of future insects that are forced to be born into short lives that end with painful deaths. Now here you can see the squishing procedure. I took a piece of cardboard from a cereal type box and put the fly on it. I pressed down hard repeatedly with a piece of wood. This piece of wood is smooth on one end and therefore it can press down pretty evenly on all parts of the fly at once. I kept pushing down hard and then also rubbed it back and forth in order to force the fly into the crevices of the paper, which helps to flatten out parts that might not be totally flat yet. Sometimes I also do what's shown here, which is to scrape the pieces into a pile and then press down hard on that pile again in case there are any chunks that were not pressed the first time. Of course, the procedure shown here is rather thorough because I want to make sure that all parts of the fly are crushed. Probably it would be fine to do something much simpler like what's shown in just the first 15 seconds of my crushing process. But I do think it's important to crush well because you don't want to have a situation where part of the fly isn't crushed and there's still aversive nervous activity going on.